And Matthew 24, 6 says, And you will hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. The end is not yet. I don't have any words to describe. First, we have this thing about George Floyd and racism. We have these weird calamities happening around the globe. We have our government passing on this anti-terrorism law, which is going to take away freedom of speech and all that. We have the social unrest about COVID. But right now, I want to speak to all my brothers and sisters in Christ. I have something to share with you. I've been on social media lately, scrolling through countless posts about protests, opinions on the government, calamities, conflict. And I find there is one common denominator in all these things. And it's that people have their own opinions. And when I think about that every time, it is true that everyone's opinion is valid. I completely agree there. But honestly, in the noise of all this arguments and conflict, all the memes about our government, all the posts, all the rants, and the appalling situations that are happening, I figure out why not go back to scripture? Why not go back to what the Bible says about all these things? Indeed, this pandemic has forced us into our homes. It's been already three months since this COVID thing has started and we're all here at home, locked in. This pandemic has forced the church into their homes doesn't mean it has stopped what's happening. We have technology to communicate with one another and even so we can still connect. That's how powerful the church is. And indeed, even if the enemy tried to use this COVID against the church, look, the church is even growing more. People are growing stronger in the word and the faith because of this quarantine. A little pandemic can't stop the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit, He's everywhere. And indeed, the Holy Spirit is powerful. We know that our God is consuming fire. If you try to stop that fire, that fire is going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's an everlasting igniting fire. And I really believe this quarantine has changed so many people, including myself. It's just sparked this fire to preach the gospel, to do the things that Jesus has commanded us to do. And not only that, there's a promise in Matthew 18, 20. It's for those who come together in the name of Jesus. He will be there among them. I've seen already so many people online coming together, gathering as a church, and indeed, He's with them. No physical thing can stop the presence of the Holy Spirit because He is Alpha and Omega. He's the first and last. He is everywhere. He is everything. And you can't stop that. And I know that the Holy Spirit will continue to ignite the hearts of His children to set them ablaze, to let them be the salt and light to this world. There are many promises that God will save and He will preserve His people. In Psalm 91, indeed, the Lord is our refuge. He will protect us. Nothing can harm the children of God without Him knowing. He has authority over all things in Matthew 28. Everything is under His control, whether we believe it or not, whether we see it or not. And I really believe that people who are in Christ will not be affected. I believe that the Lord will preserve and protect His people to the uttermost no matter what. But that's not to say that we should try jumping off a cliff or letting a snake bite us to test the Lord. In James 4.17, if you already know something and you're still going to do it, that is already sin. In Matthew 4.7 as well, when Jesus was being tempted, He said, Do not test the Lord your God. So with this wisdom that was given by the Holy Spirit, we are to use it wisely and accordingly to the Word of God. And one way we can do that is through prayer, faith, and humility. So what I'm saying is don't be nervous or worried about what happens next to your life. Trust in God that He has a plan. And at the same time, do your part. Stay vigilant, stay alert, and don't do anything silly that goes against the Word of God. Because He has already given us wisdom through the Holy Spirit. And to neglect that is, well, sin. Calamities are another part of what's happening. Earthquakes, these strange plagues that are happening. I never thought I would see this in my day at least. Luke 21 talks about these various earthquakes, these strange pestilences and famines, these will be the signs of the birth pains already. I don't know about you, but we are starting to see something already. It's hard to deny that it's nothing because indeed, things are happening and they're very strange and unusual. And one way to be very vigilant and alert about these is to know the Word of God because the Word of God is truth and spirit and it shall provide us supernatural insight and supernatural wisdom and knowledge. The question isn't why these things are happening. The question is, how can we respond to these things? 
How we choose to walk matters. Whether we walk in the flesh, in our own thinking, in our own mindset, or whether we choose to walk in the Spirit, in His wisdom, God has plans to preserve His people. Always. It's a pattern you can see in the Bible. But with great wisdom comes great responsibility. Indeed, even if an earthquake happens in your area, or if a volcano erupts, I believe that God will protect His children. Because until their appointed time has arrived, I believe that they have a purpose first to accomplish. And it's up to the children to decide whether they want to be part. My favorite verse in the book of Psalms is Psalm 34 verse 4. It says, I sought the Lord, and He heard me, and He delivered me from all my fears. Whether that be earthquakes, whether that be floods, volcano eruptions, land erosions, or whatnot, God knows your fears. And when you cast on your burdens to Him, He'll take care of it. He's not asking for us to be perfect. He's just asking for us to trust in Him, to have faith in Him, to have the humility. And even if we walk through that dark valley, He will still be with us. You see, He's going to walk with us through that dark valley that we face. Whether that be fears, trials from this life. But the point is, He's not going to bypass that dark valley. He's going to go with us through that dark valley. And we need not fear because he is with us and he is for us indeed wherever we go he will be with us whether we ascend to heaven he is there whether we ascend down to the belly of the earth he will still be there he is everywhere and he will never abandon his children and that's a promise another big one is about racism what does god say about racism what does the scripture say about racism well, i will tell you something racism is wrong period there is no question because we know that in the body of Christ as well, there is no distinction between Jew, Gentile, slave or master. We are all one and we are all united in Christ. We also know that God shows no partiality. God is not a God who likes favoritism. He doesn't like another person over another person just because of his race or his gender. God loves his children all the same. We are all human beings made in the image of God. We are to respect one another. Now I know about this whole situation with George Floyd and racism it's a big deal indeed because it's reflecting the very dark parts of humanity almost the whole world's involved with protesting with declaring that black lives matter and i agree now you may be morally right about black lives matter i agree to all lives especially the black lives right now they matter the most because of what's happening but when you start to destroy lives property and you try to protest at a cost of lives it's not worth it anymore. The amount of people that are destroying still stay the same. Even if you get to express, there's a time and place for everything. And destruction and taking away lives is not one of them. Because there is indeed one righteous judge. And his name is Jesus. He is the only one. He is the one and only judge that will forever be. And indeed, as disciples of Christ, if you are in Christ, we are not to judge by the mere appearance of a person. But we are to judge righteously just as God sees not what's outside, not the mere physical, but what's inside of a person, the heart of a person. We are all made in the image of God. And God wants us to seek Him even if we have successfully abolished racism. Without Christ, more conflict will eventually happen because we've gotten the morally standard part correct, but then the spiritual part, without Jesus, life will be meaningless. Life is nothing. Life is sad. Life is full of despair and destruction. We need to seek Him and for His goodness leads us to repentance indeed. Now, it's not about whether we have a good government or a bad government. It's how we respond as citizens of the country. I know that our government is very far from perfect, perhaps on the exact opposite of the spectrum. Now, I'm not saying we should necessarily embrace and love our government. We have the freedom of speech, the right to express ourselves. But what I'm saying is we should give them the respect that the scripture talks about. And I encourage you, even if you have strong opinions or wills against the government, do not curse nor blaspheme the government. Not even the Archangel Michael, chief leader of the angels, well, I asked him, Satan, he just said, the Lord rebuke you. And that can be applied to us. We don't have to curse the curse of the government, but let God do his part. And even if we don't see it, he is working. And we know that in the book of Mark, Jesus says, render things that belong to Caesar and render things that belong to God. 
And even in the letters of Paul and Peter, they talk about how we should be subject to every human authority because they have been established by God one way or another. Now it's no longer about whether you like the government or respect them. It's not about that anymore. It goes way more than that. It's now between you and God, whether you choose to abide in what the scripture says about respecting and being subject to authorities, or you can choose to do what you think is right. And the point is, everything has been given to us already. We have the scripture to already see what Jesus says about every single aspect of our lives. He's given us the full wisdom already through the Holy Spirit and through the Word. And to neglect it is disobedience, which in effect is absolute sin. So with this mindset, and I encourage you is to always be merciful and compassionate. I'm not saying 100 out of 100 times you're going to be perfect. I'm saying is strive to be better. And this is something I myself look forward to every single day is to be more like Jesus because it is his word and we should embrace it. And it's a command as well to obey his commandments. Truly, it is no longer about whether you want to obey the authorities. It's about obedience in the end. Because remember, if you are in Christ, you are representing the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You are carrying his banner, his name. If you're going to represent him, represent him well. That is my encouragement to every believer in Jesus out there. We are to be very careful about how we conduct ourselves, especially in politics because there are many controversial things that can arise without the proper filtering of words. And indeed, as believers, we are to judge righteously with the scripture as a reference to edify and to help people grow. It may be very hard to accept that we have this government, and I agree so. I wish we had a better government, I wish we had better authorities, but they're there and there's nothing we can do about it. But what we can do is work on the way we respond to all these things. And the only way to really get past all this is with the help of the Holy Spirit. For he will give us peace, gentleness, wisdom, knowledge, patience, endurance, and love that we can express in order that they may know Christ as well because of the love we have shown. After all, it was Jesus who loved us first. The bottom line is, it's okay to express yourself. You have the right, you have the freedom of speech. You can express yourself the way you want, whether that, whether that be through arts, through music, through speech, you can do so. It's now between you and God, the way you respond. For this life is temporary, and there is eternity to come. So I encourage you, look to the things ahead, not what's on earth. I hope this message blessed you. Thank you for watching. God bless.